What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, uh, early evening to some out there. Earthmaster here, checking in on the stream, May 7, 2021, today at 4.26 p.m. My time here in California. 2.7 latest quake out here around the Puerto Rico area. Uh, take a look at the recap of activity over the last 24 hours. Uh, shows the activity around the uh, North American continent, including that earthquake that struck uh, late last night. My time here. Uh, right around the Lake Tahoe area it was felt broadly over a region of Northern California, including areas down here around the Bay Area. Uh, in fact, I think some reports up there around the Southern Oregon as well uh, reported feeling um, a little bit of shaking. So while not a big earthquake and, uh, you know, it's somewhat along the lines of a light to moderate sized earthquake, that 4.7, uh, situated fairly shallow in the Sierra Nevada mountains, north of Lake Tahoe, west of Reno, Nevada right around the town of Truckee along Interstate 80 here. I take this road quite a few times whenever I head up into the mountains or uh, whenever I'm heading out to trips, uh, driving that is, uh, back east. But uh, this area right here is no doubt earthquake country. Um, it's pretty significant when it comes to past historical earthquake activity. This here is just over the past, oh, 120 years or so. I kind of pulled up the general location uh, to show you guys uh, the region that does this area does see some significantly larger quakes as well um, this 4.7 is the most recent to strike this area right there in the blue circle within this vicinity though we've seen uh, some much much stronger magnitude quakes including a 6.0 roughly in the same area a little bit closer to Reno uh, back in 1948 December 29th, 1948, that earthquake struck there uh, right along the, uh, the Bald Mountains Range, east side of the Sierra Nevadas. Also a couple other sizable quakes, 5.3, 1943, uh, borderline 6.0 back in 1966. So it looks like possibly we're looking at intervals of, uh, I don't know, I'm just guessing here about every 40 years or so, we see a sizable close to 6.0 magnitude quake. So uh, it, you never know, it's possible. It's been a few years since we've seen a significant size quake uh, in this region. 4.7 is not a significant earthquake, uh, but uh, it's possible we could be overdue for uh, a sizable one in this region. So uh, not saying we're gonna have one, but just saying uh, that the possibility is definitely there and it looks like some intervals of uh, 40, 50 years or so uh, is a common occurrence in this region or within the vicinity of this region. Um, a 6.0, I'm sure, struck, uh, shook things up around the Reno Sparks area. Uh, I can imagine being way up there in one of those motels uh, and having a 6.0 strike nearby. In fact, I had a weird dream last night. I was in a, I was in some high-rise motel in Hawaii, right next to Mauna Loa, and uh, a good-sized earthquake struck. And I remember specifically in my dream the motion and the swaying back of. Uh, the building I was in, the motel I was in, it was pretty scary. Uh, or, ho or hotel, right? The hotels are the high-rise ones. Uh, pretty scary. <laughs> it was seemed pretty real. Uh, I don't, I don't dream about earthquakes and stuff like that too often, but it was pretty uh, realistic in my dream, anyway. So, yeah, folks. Um, you know, Sierra Nevada mountains, no doubt earthquake country. Um, of course, that's you know kind of how they got formed over over time and time again. Um, you know, the buildup of stress and plate tectonics uh, from the west here and the, uh, the dynamics of everything that's going on out here along the west coast recently, I believe, plays a major part in it. That's going to be uh, a lot of the activity we've seen yesterday along the parts of the San Andreas Fault and the Calaveras Hayward Fault section, including areas up here along the coast range. We've see seen a uh, major increase in uh, microquake activity prior to that earthquake there in the uh, Truckee area, uh, north of Lake Tahoe. Today, things have calmed down uh, for the most part, uh, at least as of right now, almost 4.30 p.m., or it is 4.30 p.m. West Coast time. A little bit of movement up here along the um, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, some deeper movement, 19 kilometers for that smaller quake and 29 kilometers for this one here, this 2.2 uh, at the southern end. We've been monitoring this area uh, for quite a few weeks now for deep movement, uh, deep earthquake activity in this region, and also that cluster of earthquake activity uh, near the Blanco Fracture Zone up here to the north. Uh, just been a quite a bit of uh, active um, 
dynamics here in this region, including, not to mention, you know, the major player in all this is the uh, trimmer that's been taking place here in the uh, coastal areas of Oregon. Uh, 2.8 in the Gorda Ridges, right there, 10 kilometers below surface. I believe that one was there yesterday. If I can't, I, I can't remember if I covered that one or not. I believe it was, uh, but some of this deeper movement, uh, not uh, quite uh, for sure if that was there or not. Either way, that's within the last 24 hours of activity. Things are picking up. It seems into the Inner Mountain West region uh, from last night. It really wasn't. It was kind of calm, if you will. Uh, but uh, we're seeing an increase in activity around the Idaho area. Sawtooth Fault System sits around right around here. That specific fault structure, very capable of producing a 6.0 or greater magnitude earthquake. This activity, a couple twos kicking off uh, right at the northern end. We had been seeing things uh, on the uptick up here to the north and scattered about here around the Salmon River Mountains. Uh, things have kind of calmed down in that area and it's kind of picking up today right around the Sawtooth Fault area. Also some further movement uh, following that uh, 4.7 in Northern California yesterday around the Montana area uh, up here just uh, to the uh, let's see exactly where we're at it looks like Alder Montana two kilometers northwest of Alder not for sure about this specific area but we're seeing a little <coughs> excuse me we're seeing a little swarm of activity in this region in the Ruby Valley. I'm not for sure if I've ever been through that region or not. Uh, surrounded by mountains, it looks like, uh, what is that, tobacco? Tobacco Root Mountains? Uh, Greenhorn Range and the Ruby Range over here. Ruby Mountain Study Area is within this location as well. Uh, so gonna have to watch this pretty closely. No major quakes here, not even anything above 2.5, just a handful of uh, some small microquakes in this region following yesterday's 4.7 there in Northern California. Uh, some movement being reported there in Yellowstone National Park, a couple of small microquakes. Uh, I'll go ahead and check out the uh, Yellowstone map here and see if we can uh, identify those little quakes that are taking place. Yes, you can actually see them here in the northwest corner of the park by Maple Creek area. That's gonna be those microquakes striking the red line right there on, on that seismograph. Another one right there and a couple other smaller ones coinciding with what USGS has. Looks like maybe a couple more smaller ones that haven't been reported uh, within the past few hours, but uh, no major swarmings. There are no major swarming, I should say, in Yellowstone National Park. Just a couple small microquakes uh, following, uh, uh, following that event yesterday in Northern Cal. Uh, what else we got here? Let's zoom out uh, around the region and check out uh, Salt Lake City area. We're seeing an increase in movement. Kind of looking, this this map right here is kind of looking at what we had seen, oh, three or four months ago, uh, where we were ramping up activity in Utah, Nevada, Idaho. Looks as though North American plate is on bullseye. Um, again, after a little bit of uh, quiet activity, just not much, but a little couple days of quiet activity in the Intermountain West. We are watching some movement down here in Southern California along the San Jacinto Fault area. A little uptick in activity in this specific area. Uh, actually a pretty good handful of microquakes there. Most of them look like they're under 2.5. There is a 2.5 there. And it looks like within the last hour, a 2.2 uh, striking along that specific fault area called the San Jacinto Fault area uh, right here in this little uh, mountain range. This is a pretty significant fault structure here, folks. Uh, a major uh, fault strain and buildup and pressure release, of course, uh, along this area. You got the San, uh, the San Andreas Fault here, the major plate boundary. But these other ones that stretch for a considerable di distance are also, uh, you know, very capable of producing some significant size earthquakes uh, and built up strain over time. I'm not for sure if this one's due for a, a sizable earthquake or not. But ever, whenever we see swarms, we definitely want to be on guard. Uh, in that region. Always a heightened, heightened uh, chance of um, potentially seeing something bigger with swarms, especially in this area of uh, the plate boundary. Salt and sea pretty quiet. Uh, it's possible this could change uh, as we're looking at a little migration of quakes and movement down here to the south. Uh, be interesting to see tonight if this does pick up any. 
Uh, what else we got here? Hawaii. I noticed Hawaii was kind of ramping up a little bit too following that uh, quake there in, in uh, California. Seen some movement. Uh, this is the average earthquake activity along the southeast flank over here of the Big Island. Uh, but some further movement around Mauna Loa and also most recent 1.9 well to the west of Mauna Loa volcano but uh, still within that region of the uh, volcano itself, the crater area, the caldera sits over here. But uh, well, we've got 5.4 kilometers for that 1.9 uh, west of Mauna Loa. Uh, Japan still relatively quiet folks. Still absent of uh, you know any significant size quakes aside from that 6.8 a few days ago week ago now I believe somewhere around there uh, a little bit of movement along the uh, Philippines area that earthquake uh, let's see here I believe that's I'm not for sure if that was there last night or not I think we had not seen a little bit larger one pretty deep 4.6 140 kilometers uh, that one 4.8 a little bit more shallower so be on guard around this area looks like potentially something building up here at a uh, level just to the north maybe possibly around the Philippine Sea, uh, Philippine Trench area uh, for some potential larger scale movement. Always watching this region up here um, for quite a few weeks now. It just, uh, it's, it's, it's there. It's on target for something big. Uh, pair of earthquakes all throughout the Indonesia, uh, Indonesia region. Uh, Solomon Island seeing a, a double back-to-back -back earthquake, back-to-back -back earthquake activity around Tonga as well. Uh, this movement here, a little on the deeper side. Uh, let's see where that deep movement at. 35 kilometers for the for this one at 5.0, uh, but there was a 4.0 further to the west of Fiji, up near uh, the Solomon Islands area, Santa Cruz Islands, uh, Vanuatu region, Port Villa down here. 160 kilometers for that 4.4, uh, and also this earthquake that we covered earlier this morning, 6.0, near uh, west of Ma. Ma Macquarie Island. I know I said it right earlier because I looked up the pronunciation of it. <laughs> Some of these names, it's like, uh, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to check beforehand, but I forgot it already. Anyway, it's Friday, folks. Uh, beautiful evening to sit back, barbecue, uh, play some music, you know, and, and drink a couple beers, possibly. We'll see how it goes. Uh, either way, it's a pretty nice evening for that. Uh, so I'm going to barbecue up some chicken and some oysters and, uh, have myself an enjoyable night hope everyone else out there does the same or at least enjoys their evening it doesn't have to be the same <laughs> the same way that i'm doing it but uh definitely uh you know it's, it's friday evening friday afternoon uh good to uh unwind and relax and uh you know have some r and r out there everyone every single person out there enjoys some or needs some r and r uh, on occasion that's for sure uh, all right, folks, I think that's about it. Uh, there was, what do we got out here around the mid-Atlantic range? A uh, little 5.5 little off the rift area. Down here in these little uh, ridges, Researcher Ridge. That's a pretty good sized earthquake for this region here. 5.5, Just we, it's been relatively quiet in this region here. All right, guys, um, trimmer hasn't been updated until about 6.30 my time, a couple hours. I'm kind of curious to see what that looks like, uh, if it's been relieved or not. I, I still think we're still, uh, it's still kicking. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see a release of pressure until Japan uh, lets loose and starts seeing uh, either a, a significant size earthquake over here or a many, many, many uh, fives and potentially a couple sixes in this area. To uh, relieve the trimmer that's going on on this side of the plate, which is all connected. We're all connected, right? Plate tectonics, your Earth, your universe, everything's connected, believe it or not. You know, thousands and thousands of miles away, uh, activity can have uh, a negative, positive reaction uh, that far away. So I firmly believe what's going on here in Japan uh, is having a major play and role with the trimmer in the, uh, in the Pacific Northwest Oregon area. All right, guys, have a good evening. Good night. Uh, if something does bust out here, we'll jump on and uh, do an update video. But for now, take care. Stay safe out there.